Welcome back to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at the Graveyard Book, Chapter 4, The Witch's Headstone. Now there's a lot of stuff to cover here, so I'm going to try and hit it pretty fast. But first of all, Bod is really curious about this witch that lives in this part of the graveyard where um, people get buried that didn't die in a, in a good way. So maybe they were a thief or a killer or a witch and they got, they got punished and died and they get buried in this bad part of the graveyard. Silas tells us that's called the potter's field. And Bod really wants to go find this witch. And he's just really curious and um, wondering, I don't know, if there was a witch's house near you, would you want to go visit it and look at it? I, I know I would. And so Bod learns about the potter's field but he can't go visit there. And then Silas says, go to your lessons, I need to go have breakfast. So Bod goes and has lessons with some dead guy who's trying to teach him some old things, but he tries to teach him fading. Fading is a skill and ability of the ghost of the dead where people can't see them, their eyes just slip away from them. Much like people don't see Bod when he's in the graveyard, he's fading away people can't see him. The unfortunate thing is Bod's not very good at this when other people are trying to see him. When living people are trying to see him, the graveyard protects him. But when Silas or the dead people or Miss Lupesco, something like that, Bod can't use that skill. And he's trying, but he can't do it. And his teacher's very angry. So then Bod goes to other lessons where he's learning English, but this English teacher uh, likes to talk about other stories, so Bod likes to distract her, and Bod's asking about the graveyard or the potter's field, and she tells him about um, the bad people that go there. After the lessons, Bod wants to go see the potter's field, but he's not going to be disobedient. He's going to obey the rules, and he's going to stay on the, the um, right side of the graveyard. But he climbs up a tree, that kind of hangs over the potter's field and you can kind of see out into that area. Um, it's an apple tree. He sees some really precious, delicious apple and he thought they're all gone, but there's one left and he's climbing up to get it and he reaches for it and the branch he's on snaps and he falls into the potter's field. Luckily, he falls onto a pile of um, dead leaves and grass and things like that and it kind of cushes as he falls and he doesn't break anything but there's a young girl who we discover is the witch and she looks at his leg and she kind of heals it or makes it feel better and then bod and her start talking and bod's like oh my goodness i'm in the potter's field i hear there's bad people here that got hung that got drowned that were stealing things and there's even a witch and the little girl's like yeah 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 and then Bob's like, Wait, which one are you? Did you get drowned? Did you get burned? Did you steal something? And uh, she explains stuff and kind of shares her story. That she was a little girl and that um, the village people came to her house one day and they grabbed her. And then they said she was a witch and so they threw her in the water and they held her in the water and um, she drowned. But she didn't drown completely. She only drowned mostly and when they pulled her out and they put her on the ground to, to see if she was dead, she coughed up some water, she cursed them, and then she died. So we kind of learned this. And the curse actually happened very quickly. Um, there was some carpet that one of the people bought. And in that carpet, there was the plague. And all the people that were there when Eliza drowned, they all got the plague. Um, and they got buried in a plague pit. So that didn't even get buried in the graveyard. And uh, she kind of shares this story, but she's really sad because even though uh, all this stuff happened and she was buried in the potter's field, they didn't give her like a little rock or gravestone to say her name or to say anything about her. When Bod hears all this, he decides, man, I want to help this girl. I'm going to get her a headstone. And so he decides, it has this personal quest. And so he learns a little bit about headstones, how much they cost. He has a little bit of money, but it's not enough. So he decides he has to go visit the Sleer, 
take some treasure and sell the treasure to buy Liza a headstone. And so he goes in there and he sees the Sleer and the Sleer's trying to scare him, but Bob's not scared. And he actually learns that the Sleer's been here for thousands of years, protecting this resting place for the master. And Bob says, look, the master's never going to come back. You're, you can probably rest. No one's going to come for this treasure and I need to borrow it. <laughs> and the Sleer's like, no, you can't take the treasure. Um, we were protecting it. Bob takes the brooch. And he runs off, and the Sleer is really crazy at first, but then he's like, it will come back. The treasure always comes back. And then Bod goes, and he looks at this brooch, and it looks really beautiful, and he kind of feels like this magic pull to keep it. But Bod is kind of pure-hearted, and he's like, no, I need to sell this for my friend. He takes the brooch to go find um, a headstone. Before he goes into town, he asks Liza, what do you want on your headstone? She's like, I just want a big E and a big H. And then Bod is like, okay, I can't go into town in my graveyard clothes because it's just pretty much a long shirt. I need to find some normal <laughs> human clothes. And so he goes to, um, to the gardener's, um, gardener's shack, the gardener's building. He sneaks in, he finds a jacket, he finds some pants, and then he goes off into the village or the city. Now, here we find Ebenezer Bulger. Ebenezer Bulger is not a good guy. He, his business is uh, when people have something that they wanna sell, like jewelry or technology or something very old, he buys it from them at a very low cost and then he sells it later at a higher cost. This is called like a pawn shop. Um, but he also, he takes stolen things and he takes them and he gets them to be sold again in other pl in other places. So if I steal something, I can take it to Abinazar. He'll buy it from me at a very low cost, but then he'll take that and he'll get it so that way um, I, can, I don't get caught. And then he sells it for a lot of money. So this is kind of his job. And so Bod comes in and Abinazar's like, oh, man, boy, get out of here. I don't have time for you. But then Bod lays down this brooch and Abinazar's like, whoa, this is real. This is a real treasure and he, he wants to keep it. He's very tricky and he makes Bod feel friendly and he's like, oh, come back here into my office and let's talk about this thing. And he starts to get some information from Bod very trickily. Oh, are your parents worried about you? No, my parents aren't. Oh, shoot. Uh, I should have said my parents are worried about me. But Ebenezer, oh, okay. Um, and do you know where you got this? Did you get it from a museum? No, I took it from a graveyard, but I can't tell you where it is. And Evan is like, okay, good. And he captures Bod. So he won't let Bod go until Bod tells him where the treasure is. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And so Bod is trapped and Bod is kind of worried and scared. Um, he doesn't know what he can do. Now, Ebenezer goes out and he makes a phone call to his friend, Tom Hustings. And Tom is like a big guy and he's kind of scary. He's not really smart, but um, he'll be really good for scaring Bod into telling him where the rest of the treasure is. So he needs help and he calls Tom. Tom comes over and while, while Tom is coming over, um, Ebenezer remembers, oh, you know what? He finds this black card it says Jack on the card and he flips it over and he wrote instructions on how to invite the Jack um, when he needs him. And so Evan Azar's like, you know what? I think this boy is who Jack is looking for and this boy has treasure. Oh my goodness, we're gonna get double rich. Tom arrives, Evan Azar tells him all about this stuff. Tom's like, wow, this thing is really precious. And this magic of the brooch starts to happen into Ebenezer and into Tom, where they both want to keep it for themselves. And while all this is happening, Eliza comes and she goes into uh, where Bod is because she can just go through the doors and stuff. And she's like, hey, Bod, what are you doing? Bod is like trying to find something to like hit Ebenezer on the head with or, or some weapons. 
and she tells Bod about, oh, there's now this Tom guy out there, and he's really big. You're not going to be able to fight these guys. What are you going to do? And why are you doing all this stupid stuff? And Bob says, look, I, I just wanted to get you a headstone. So I was going to try and sell some treasure here to buy you a headstone because I wanted to say thank you. And Eliza's like, oh, my goodness, that's so wonderful. Um, no one's ever done anything li nice like that to me before. And she uses her witch magic to help Bod fade. And so then Bod uses this skill. And as Tom and Ebenezer come into the office, they can't find Bod. And they get really angry. They start blaming each other. And then they both leave. And they lock the door again. Now, when they are in the main office, they start arguing and they start fighting. And Ebenezer poisons Tom. So he puts some poison in a drink. And then Tom realizes that, hey, some, you put something in my drink, didn't you? And Ebenezer says, yeah, you're trying to steal my brooch. And then so Tom starts to fight with Ebenezer. And they, I, I guess they kind of kill each other. We don't really know if they're actually dead. But when Bod leaves, they're both like on the ground. Now, they're both dead or whatever, but Bod is still locked in. And so he can't unlock the lock, but he puts some paper underneath and he pushes the key out of the keyhole. Boom! It lands on the paper. Bod pulls the paper. He has the key. And Eliza's like, whoa, hey, you're pretty smart. He unlocks the door. He's free. And they run off. And as he's running away, Silas finds Bod. And Bod is really um, embarrassed. He kind of explains himself to Silas a little bit. Silas grabs him and whoosh, they fly off to the graveyard. Oh, and Bod is safe again. Um, Bod gives him the paper, the card that Ebenezer had. And um, Silas, can he knows that it's really bad and that it's from the Jacks and that they're trying to find Bod. So he takes this to throw it away. Or do something with it. And Bod, give, he takes the um, paperweight that he took from Ebenezer to fight him. And he writes this big E and a big H. And he puts it to where he thinks Eliza's was buried. And, um, and then he goes off. And he hears as he's leaving, wow, that looks really nice. Or that's pretty good. Or that's pretty or beautiful or something. And then that's how the chapter ends. Whew, a lot going on here. Let's hit vocabulary. Um, belfry. <laughs> belfry is like the bell tower, as far as I know. If you think about like a church, and there's a long tower usually at the top, and there's a bong, bong, a bell in there. And that's kind of where Silas sleeps. Unconsecrated. And we also learn a little later, unhallowed. Both these are the same meaning, not holy. So uh, whenever the church is going to be made, the priest or the pastor, whatever, they would walk along that ground and they'd say, Oh, God, make this ground holy, uh, make this ground pure, all the bad things go away. Okay, so that's consecrated, that's hollowed ground. So the other ground where they bury the bad people is unconsecrated. They didn't pray over that, they didn't make this holy area. So that's unconsecrated or unhallowed ground. It's not special in a spiritual way. Um, unshriven. I had no idea what this meant. I had to look it up. And uh, shriven is like guilt-free. I died um, shriven with, with a pure heart. Unshriven means you feel guilty. So people that stole something and they're like, no, I don't want to die. I don't want to die yet. I'm so sorry. Don't kill me. So kind of like this. Um, they're unshriven. Our sort of people. <laughs> this is kind of a way um, when someone has some prejudice or racism, you know, anything like that, where they say they don't want to say it like, oh, those are dirty people or those are poor people or those are not our, you know, they say those are those aren't our sort of people. So when Bod wants to go to visit the potter's field, they say, oh, those aren't our people. They're not polite people. They're not um, normal people. They're bad people. We don't go there. But they say our sort of people. Irrelevancies are things that aren't important. Relevant means important. Irrelevant, not important. 
irrelevancies, things that aren't important. Lummix is like a big, clumsy, stupid person. And so Liza starts calling Bod in a friendly way, um, bad names, um, calling him stupid or silly or something like that. At first, she's young master, young master, but then they become a little more friendly and she starts giving him kind of teasing words. Because Liza, she kind of looks a little bit like a goblin, a little bit tricky, a little bit uh, mischievous, a little bit playful, um, like a young witch, right? And that's kind of her character. Sentimental means has some emotional feeling, maybe some memory. Um, here we go. Like, here, here's this little um, paper that my daughter made, okay? It's uh, some paper, it says, I love you, daddy, by Hada. It's a little story, actually. And she's like, daddy, you're amazing. Okay, this has, it's not worth five cents, okay? It's not worth a penny. It's garbage, it's trash. If anyone else had this, but for me, oh, it's really precious, okay? It's sentimental. There's some emotional feeling connected to it um, that I don't want to throw it away. Sentimental value. And Ebenezer would say, oh, this wedding ring, <laughs> I'm not wearing my wedding ring right now, sorry. He's like, this wedding ring, I can't really sell it, I know it's, but I know it's important to you, so I'll give you a little bit of money because it's important to you, and I'll try and help you out, even though he's going to take this and he's going to sell it for a lot more. But that's sentimental. Um, affability is friendliness. I had to look this one up. Um, where Ebenezer, he's kind of rude at first, but then he tries to be um, affable, use affability. <laughs> he tries to show some friendliness towards Bod to uh, get information. And that leaves us with our discussion question. How would you try to get Liza's headstone? Um, Bod decides to go get treasure from the seer and, and um, go buy one in the, in the town. What would you do if you wanted to do something good for Liza and you wanted to get her headstone? How would you do that for her? And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.